What's going on YouTube and four-wheel drive fans? It's Andreas here from Symmetry Four-Wheel Drive. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to have a look at doing a fluid and filter change or service on the Pajero. So we are going to be changing the diff oils, the transfer case oils, the gearbox oil, as well as the engine oil, and then replacing the oil filter, the air filter, as well as the fuel filter. So just a general service on the Pajero. And that is the 4M40 2.8 TD. So that's the 2.8 liter four cylinder diesel Pajero on the long wheelbase 2.5 uh, blister fender. And yeah, let's jump into it. This is just gonna be a quick video showing you how to do a fluid and filter service on your Pajero. So just having a look here at the fluids and parts for this service, we are using the Caltex Dello 400 MGX, that's a 15W40 engine oil. Then we are using the Castrol uh, Transmax axle, that's a 80W90, and that is for the um, front and rear diff. Then for the gearbox oil, we are using a 80W90 Castrol Transmax manual uh, oil for the gearbox and the transfer case. Then we have our GUD fuel filter here, our Fram air filter, and then also our Fram oil filter. So those are all the consumables and parts you will need to do this service. So I don't know if you could hear me properly because the car's idling away in the background here. But what we are doing is we just got the car onto as level a surface as possible. This is the best I have to work with here. And we are also just warming up the car to get the oil a bit thinner and also make sure that it's all mixed properly for when we drain it. And the car is on a level surface so that when we start draining the fluids, there isn't extra fluid sitting somewhere if the car is leaning this way or that way. So just try to use as level a surface as possible when you're draining your fluids on the car. So the first step in the process is getting off the bash plate that is on the car. So we're just going to be removing this bash plate so that we can get to everything that we need to get to. So here is the sump plug on the oil pan of the 4M40 Pajero. That will be if the car is facing forwards, that's on the right hand side of the car. So you just need a 17 millimeter socket or a spanner to remove that. So once you've removed the sump plug and drained the oil, then we'll just be removing the oil filter that is just up from the sump plug there. That's simple enough. So just before we pull the plug on the sump there, we are just going to take off the filler cap for the oil on the engine so that there isn't any vacuum or anything like that keeping any oil anywhere. So we're just going to open that up so that the oil can drain nicely. Everyone on YouTube always has these fancy ways of pulling out the sump plug and not getting any oil on their hands. I'm not going to try anything like that. Um, the 4M4D takes about 8 and a bit litres of oil, so you can uh, at least want an 8 litre oil bucket to collect that oil when it's coming out. I'm just trying to plan the trajectory of the flow here. So we have let that drain for about 10 to 15 minutes now. You can see it's just a very slight drip that is coming off of there. So we're just gonna clean up around there, put the sump plug back in. So what you would normally do is change this copper washer. Unfortunately, I don't have a new copper washer for this. So I'm gonna reuse the old one. 
it's not recommended but I don't think it will leak and we'll see if it does leak at all but I would recommend changing this copper washer when you do uh, change your oil so I'll be doing another service probably in about six months time or so so I'll just get the right washer when I change it again So the oil is all drained now and we've put the sump plug back in. So what we're going to do now is take our new oil filter and we are just going to prime that which means fill it with oil and because the orientation goes upwards into the engine bay we can actually fill it with oil, with oil. and then we'll also just put a bit of oil around this uh, rubber seal on it just so that that makes a nice seal on the oil filter housing as well. So we're just going to fill this up and then we're going to take the old one off and then pop this in. The old filter off. It would be messier than I expected. start filling the engine with oil again. So the sump plug is back on, the new oil filter is back on, so now we're going to start filling the engine with oil. So it takes about 8 litres, what we're going to do is keep on topping up, letting it settle and then checking the dipstick. So I've got the correct amount of oil in there now, I checked the dipstick and we are just going to put on the oil filler cap again and then that's the oil change done, the engine oil change done. So with the oil change done now we are going to change the air filter on the car. So this is the air box and you just need to remove these clips all around the air box and then you can remove that lid for the housing and then replace the air filter so i'll just take that off and then show you what it looks like so with those four latches removed you can see that's the lid that's loose on the air box so we can just take this old filter out and then put in the new one we have put the new filter in so now we just need to put the lid back on the air box so just do those four latches up again so now all four latches are closed again and the air box air filter replacement is done so next up for us is replacing the diesel filter here that's just under the intercooler and sits against the firewall here so we're just going to loosen off these two um, uh, bolts at the top I think that's a 10 millimeter socket and then we can take the housing uh, to the side here and then remove the filter and replace that I'm just going to disconnect one of the battery terminals the positive just for any time I do anything with fuel or uh, diesel, petrol, anything like that, in case there's sparks or anything, I disconnect. Just disconnect the battery. I'm also going to put some rags underneath where the filter is there just to catch any diesel that comes out, and we're going to get into that now. And these are actually 12 uh, mole spanner, uh, or a 12 mole spanner is actually required to remove these, or 12 mole socket. So we've taken off the bolt so that this housing is loose for the fuel filter. There's the new filter. We're going to unscrew the filter off the top and then just connect the connector at the bottom and then take that out and then reverse the steps and put those back in. And then we just have some new O-rings with this new 
filter for the bottom there. So one more step is just disconnecting that pigtail plug on the bottom of the fuel filter and then we're going to start taking it off. One other step, I thought I could do it with this in the car but instead I'm just going to remove these hose clamps on the, the return and the, the feed line and then just take those lines off so I can remove the whole filter and housing and then change it outside of the car. So now we have the filter and housing outside of the car so we're just going to disassemble this and then reassemble it in the new filter. So we have the filter housing and the little bottom pigtail off the car now so we're just going to put on that new rubber o-ring at the bottom here and then another o-ring on the actual uh, housing there and then we're just going to put on the new filter. So here we have the new o-ring on the bottom, the new o-ring on the housing and the filter. We're just going to put a tiny bit of oil on here just to make sure it seals properly and then put it all together. So now we're just going to screw this on to the bottom of the filter. We're just going to tighten this up now. And then just also make sure that the top so yeah, we are just tightening both of these up right now. So I've just primed the filter now. We can push down for about a minute until you feel it getting hard to push down, then it should be primed. So we're gonna start up the car and then check how everything is going. There we go, the car starts up, sounding good. Just gonna check for leaks and all that, but otherwise I think we're good to go. So now that we've finished the engine service on the car, we're now gonna move on to the drivetrain service. So that's gonna be the fluids in the rear and front diff, as well as the transfer case and the gearbox. So we're gonna jump into doing the rear diff now. So here on the rear of the car, we're just gonna loosen off this uh, filling uh, point on the rear diff and that's going to use a 24 millimeter socket and then once we have taken off the filling point we're then going to open up on this side of the diff if you can see over there we are going to open up the drain hole so we'll drain the fluid and then refill it So the rear diff is drained now, so we're just going to wipe away the excess oil there and then put our plug back in the rear diff. So like I mentioned with the sump on the car, the copper washers, it's advisable to replace them. I didn't have a replacement here, so I'm just using the old washer but I will, I've taken the specs so I can get a new washer when I change the oil again, yeah. Um, the rear plug on the diff also has a magnet and that will attract any particles, um, any wear, like metal shavings that occur in the diff and I'm happy to see that my magnet is basically clean with no metal shavings on it so that means everything should be healthy and good in the diff. So now all we need to do is fill the diff and that will take about uh, 3.2 liters is the capacity of the diff. So we're just going to fill it until it starts draining out of this hole, uh, the fill hole and that is what the capacity is. We are using a ATW90 oil and that is a GL5 oil so that's going to be going in the diff here. So the oil 
oil is starting to come out of the the full hole so now we can take that out and then plug it back up. So that is the rear diff filled and the uh, full plug uh, tightened up. So that is done. So now we can move on to the front diff. So now we are moving on to the front diff. What we're going to do is again use our 24 millimeter socket and take off the full plug. And then once we've taken off the full plug, we're going to loosen the drain plug underneath here and then drain the oil. So there we have the oil draining and once that's drained we're going to follow the process like on the rear diff and then put in the, the bottom plug Fill it up until the top starts coming out the top full and then close it back up. So because I can't get a funnel in the top full hole there, I'm going to be using an oil can like this to get the oil into the diff. So now the oil is coming out of the filler so we can now put the filler plug back on and close up the front diff. So now we have put on the top filler plug and the front diff is filled with the oil again. So next up we are going to be draining and filling the transfer case uh, oil. So we're just going to remove the transfer case skid plate here or bash plate and then we're going to drain out this bottom plug over here and then fill in that full plug over there. So we're just going to take off the skid plate that's using a 12 millimeter on the bolts here, 12 mm socket and we're just going to take that off quickly. So using a 24mm socket, we're just going to take off the full plug. It's quite hard to get in between the torsion bar and the drain plug, so I can't fit a socket in there, so I'm just going to use this shifting spanner to do that or you can just use a 24 millimeter spanner if you have one. So the transfer case is drained, so we're gonna put the bottom drain plug back in and then we can start filling it. So the oil that we're going to be using for the transfer case and the manual gearbox on the Pajero is the Castrol Transmax manual and that's a 80W90 GL4 oil. So we have filled the transfer case now, we're just letting the excess just drain out the full hole. Uh, we just overfold so that it, we knew there was enough in it. It takes about 2.5 liters and now we're just going to wait for that to drain out the full and then we're going to plug it back up. So now we're going to do the gearbox oil. So the full plug is situated up here. It's a very awkward place to get to. And then the drain plug is just over there. So we're going to loosen the drain plug and 
drain all the oil and then we're gonna start filling it up here where the full plug is. So we have the gearbox all drained now, so we're just going to put that drain plug back on. So now we just need to start filling the gearbox with about 3.7 litres of oil or until it runs out the full. And that's going to be a difficult job with the position and a bit of a tedious job as well. So we filled up the gearbox with oil and put the full plug back in. So that is the driveline service complete and that completes our service up until now.